Last week, we took a look at the Italian Che Rigotti rifle, an experimental weapon that never saw any true combat during World War I, despite its revolutionary operation at the time. This week, though, we're switching gear, and we're focusing on a weapon that really does stand in the mind as one of the most iconic weapons from the war, a weapon that holds the title of the first practical submachine gun to be used in combat. This week on Battlefield 1 Weapon History, we're going to be taking a look at the Bergman MP18 submachine gun. So before we get into the history, let's see what DICE have done with this weapon here in Battlefield 1. Now the MP18 is the starter weapon included in the Assault class and does offer some very good statistics to start people off in the game. It comes in three variants, the Trench, the Optical and the Experimental and it's really designed to work as a gun that offers a bit of range to the holder so they aren't purely limited to close quarters combat. The trench variant focuses on hip fire accuracy, and as the name suggests, it's perfect for mopping up enemies in a trench environment. Whilst there aren't too many trench positions available in Battlefield 1 at the moment, the opinion of the community is very strong that more should be included. And if rumours are to be believed, DICE already may be working on a trench map that represents the Western Front. Now that could be really interesting. The optical variant adopts a red dot iron sight system over the standard iron sights offered on the trench variant, and it's the model that you'll want to be using if your aim is to pick off players a little bit further out. Now it also incorporates a slightly reduced bullet spread if you're firing it on the move, and that plays off those improved sights. Now the experimental version of the weapon this is a little bit interesting, it offers players a three round burst fire mode and that's perfect for picking off players at longer ranges than even what the optical is designed to reach out to. It favours a player who likes to stand still and fire with a reduced bullet spread compared to the other variants and it even comes with considerably less horizontal recoil than the others as well. It has just 0.161 to the left and to the right compared to the 0.23 of the optical and the trench. Now the vertical recoil stays the same, but with that three round burst, you will find it much easier to control the recoil overall. One downside of the experimental variant is it is subject to a longer reload time, 3.3 seconds compared to the others at 2.96. Now in practice, this really shouldn't become much of an issue as this variant is really designed to be used at longer range and that means you should have the time to reload in relative calm before you get back into another fight. The MP18's main competitor here in Battlefield 1 is the Automatico, the other SMG that's unlocked early in the Assault class. Now the Automatico provides the user a much, much faster rate of fire of 900 rounds a minute in comparison to the MP18's 550, but it does suffer from severely reduced range, reduced bullet velocity, and drastically higher recoil across the board. So you can therefore think of the MP18 as the more controlled SMG on offer, and it's more of a weapon you can compare to the Hell Regal, the level 10 weapon in the Assault class. Now the Hell Regal is a popular choice because of its large magazine size. It offers far more bullets to fire downrange than what the MP18 can. However, the Hell Regal can overheat, whereas the MP18 will have no problem emptying its magazine without hitting a heat threshold. The MP18 also has a faster bullet velocity than the Hell Regal, 420 meters a second versus 380. So in longer range fights, it's going to be a benefit to you to take the MP18. It's a reliable, consistent, automatic weapon that anyone can be successful with. Each of its three variants allows it to excel in different scenarios and it will offer any player a good platform to start with. But how have DICE portrayed the weapon in Battlefield 1 then, in comparison to its real life counterpart? Is it a historically accurate representation or have they bent the rules a little bit to offer players something they'll enjoy using? Let's find out. The 
the Bergman MP18, or to give it its proper name, the Maschinen Pistol 18, was designed in the mid-1910s and was driven by the need to develop a more practical weapon for trench warfare. Many of the German soldiers carried cumbersome bolt-action rifles, which while were accurate at range and shooting over trench walls, didn't offer much in the way of close quarters effectiveness. Now the Carabiner 98A, previously issued to German cavalrymen, was adopted into the elite forces of the German army in favour of the heavier Gewehr 98. But still, the need for something better grew stronger. The German Rifle Testing Commission did experiment with modifying existing pistols, such as the Luger and the C96 Mauser, to operate in a fully automatic mode, but these tests ended up failing. The pistols themselves were too light, they incurred considerable recoil when fired, and they would be out of ammunition almost instantly. A team at the Bergman Weapons Factory, consisting of the weapons manufacturer Theodore Bergman and the engineer Hugo Schmeisser, conceptualized the MP18 to meet the requirements of the testing commission. The MP18 used an open bolt blowback design, one that had very few moving parts and therefore cost less to manufacture. Now rounds were fed into the weapon by the rather iconic and striking TM08 snail magazine, which was affixed to the weapon on the left of the receiver. Now the magazine consisted of a small drum and an extended shaft coming off of it, and it contained 32 rounds of German standard issue 9mm Parabellum, all of which was designed to be used with the Luger pistol. The initial design was said to have been a 20 round box magazine in place of the snail drum, maybe what you might know more as a stick magazine, and that would protrude horizontally out from the side of the weapon. That design was dropped in favour of the 9mm Parabellum drum, which as I just mentioned, had already been developed for the Luger pistol. Rate of fire was said to be between 4 and 500 rounds a minute, no value at the time was accurately measured, with bullets leaving the barrel at speeds of 380 metres a second. The barrel itself was fitted with a perforated jacket to help with cooling, as previous tests had revealed the weapon could quickly overheat due to its automatic fire. Although designs for the weapon began in 1915, production didn't start until 1918, and that's the year that World War I ended. The weapon was deployed just in time for the Kaiserschlacht offensive along the Western Front for the German army. The MP18 was given to the Sturmtruppen, the elite soldiers of the German army. Their tactics have been developed over the years of World War I, and they operated differently from the standard orders given to the army by the German High Command. Now interestingly, the name of the German general, Oskar von Hutier, is the name given to the recent weapon skin handed out as part of the November Battlefest in Battlefield 1 for the MP18. Lots of people call it the PTFO skin, but in game it is actually known as the Hutier. The tactics used by the Sturmtruppen, what were known as the infiltration tactics to them, were known to the Allies as Hutier tactics, where junior leaders in the German army could make their own decisions on the fly, rather than waiting for orders to arrive from some general far behind the lines. The tactics were built on the element of surprise. First of all, a short artillery bombardment would fall, mixing explosives in with poisonous gas in order to neutralize the enemy defenses. Stormtroopers were then sent over the top in small groups, rushing across no man's land using any cover they could really get their hands on, whilst laying down suppressive fire for the next wave of troops to follow in. The stormtroopers would then push on into enemy held territory, taking down anyone they could in an attempt to stop a retaliation. The following troops would be armed with machine guns and flamethrowers, and they would attack slightly stronger points on the line, using field guns and mortars to suppress the enemy. After this, regular German infantry would then follow up and capture or kill the remaining soldiers. By 1918, this tactic was in full force by the Germans, and by equipping their elite forces with the MP18, a weapon designed to swiftly sweep through enemy trenches their effectiveness would surely almost be unrivaled. However, 
What prompted the Germans to initiate the Kaiserschlacht in March 1918 was the imminent arrival of the US forces across the Atlantic to join the Allies. The Germans knew their only chance to defeat the Allies was right now. The Russians had surrendered in the east and this freed up troops for this massive assault. The use of the MPA team was short-lived, only really being effective during that spring offensive by the Germans who, as we all know, did not see the victory that they'd wanted. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles, a peace document signed between Germany and the Allied powers, dictated that Germany could only hold so many weapons, and many of them needed to be modified. Despite this lockdown, it appears the MP18 was still held in vast numbers by the Germans, perhaps in secret, and were used by German police forces during the period between World War I and World War II. The MP18's license was eventually sold by Bergman to SIG in 1920, and many weapons spawned from its sale. The SIG Bergman 1920 was essentially the same weapon, but was made to chamber different rounds from the standard 9mm Parabellum. So, from what we can take from the history books, it seems DICE stayed fairly true to what the MP18 was actually like during World War I. Now, the experimental variant, though, that seems to be blurring the lines between fact and fiction. I can't find any reference to it ever existing, and some of the weapon statistics have been slightly changed as well. Although I will say, it's modelled very nicely in-game, with that snail magazine and the perforated barrel as well, really standing out and making you remember what the MP18 looks like. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know down below what you think of the MP18 in the comments. Don't forget to drop me a like and also let me know what weapon you want me to feature next week on Battlefield 1 Weapon History. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.